coming back to school with me We could have done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson Wood. I'm the board game teacher. Thanks for coming to the classroom. Today I'm going to be looking at the sixth part of the nine part series in the Engage Math series that I'm doing for this channel. And this one's called Teaching Through Problem Solving. So around teaching through problem solving, the Engage Math document has the following to say. Teaching through problem solving is not the same as solving word problems. When students engage in problematic situations, they become curious, motivated to explore, and generalize mathematical ideas. Problems are carefully selected and differentiated to be accessible yet challenging for all students. And they also go on to say, a problem-solving approach also develops what Fullen characterizes as a vitally important 21st century teaching and learning skill. Students must engage in critical thinking and problem-solving. To criti think critically, to design and manage projects, solve problems, make effective decisions using a variety of digital tools and resources. So in tying this back into the board games, you're going to be specifically choosing the thing. So as the document says, to carefully select the problems that you're doing, you're going to be selecting the games to be meeting particular skills in your classroom. You will differentiate the games based on the needs of your students. So the games should be accessible, as they're saying, and challenging. So the games that they're playing will be helping to develop the skills that they need to develop through the play of the game. And depending on the levels of the students, some games can be modified to make them more or less challenging. And then when the second part of that uh, statement was talking about the uh, critical thinking and problem solving being 21st century skills, well that's something I've already talked about in the Empowering Modern Learner uh, videos that I've done, where the collaboration, critical thinking, problem solving, communication are all part of the 21st century learning skills. Well here you're getting the critical thinking and the problem solving again in the math through the problem solving but still through a game. So it doesn't even have to be a cooperative board game and that was something I was highly touting as being a very great way to teach those 21st century learning skills, but even in any game that you're playing, you're going to be getting problem solving skills and critical thinking skills, which are two of those things that you are looking for in the 21st century learning skills. When you are looking for games to teach through you know, problem solving and things through, what you're looking for is games which are going to develop procedural and conceptual understanding. It's, it's uh, really important when you're doing problem solving to make sure that the students are using the problems to make sense of the math. And I mean, this is one thing I always complained about when I was a kid, like, why, didn't, why do I ever need to learn this? When am I ever going to use this? Well, this is a great way to show, not only in a board game setting, but just start to at least make a situation where the kids can see things are applicable. This is something I always had a, a personal beef with in probability units when I was teaching them before. And like the only things I could think of to teach were like the flip a coin and do an experiment to see how many times you get heads or tails or what colors the spin are going to land on. I mean, who cares? I mean, it really didn't apply anything to it and it wasn't something that their kids really cared about. But when now, when I do my probability unit and I'm using games like Cockroach Poker and Love Letter and the kids are able to discuss and the probabilities of the games that are in there and critically think and problem solve through that, applying it to something which is actually meaningful and they're motivated to do. And so the whole thing now becomes a much richer experience for them than my previous years of teaching when I did the coin flips and the spinners, uh, spinner spins. So the board games provide that framework for something far more meaningful and in the end far more valuable. So the Engage Math document stresses the importance of not just teaching problems, how to solve problems, but actually teaching the math through the solving of the problem. And th by doing this, the students are going to have increased motivation and confidence in their mathematics. They start to see themselves more as flexible mathematical thinkers, and this is definitely something that we want to instill in them. And so, again, the board games are great because of the way that they motivate the kids to play in the first place. So even as they're, if they're struggling a little bit with some of the math concepts that are there, they're still happy that they're playing a game as opposed to doing something out of a textbook or on a worksheet or you know, in a, in a group whatever, I mean, just the, the, the board games are very motivating. And 
Further motivation for them is to try to win the game. And to win the game, usually you have to have a better understanding of some of the maths that are going on. And particularly if you're doing it in a classroom setting and you're encouraging and expanding those expectations to share their thinking, then they're getting continual practice with this. But overall, the idea being that you're giving them this opportunity to problem solve and do so in a fun way. And something I've talked about too, I've done a whole video already on growth mindset and how uh, board games promote growth mindset. And growth mindset is such an important thing when teaching mathematics through problem solving to be able to take on a problem, not be successful, but you know, persevere until you do. That idea of not giving up on something just because it's difficult is very important and is something that board games again do very well. You can see my other video on growth mindset for more ideas on how that helps there. But the mathematics, but as the students continue to develop their growth mindset and continue to be more willing to take on challenges without fear of failure through the play of games, they can, and especially in the games that are promoting the use of the mathematics, then hand in hand they will start to develop a growth mindset, but also that growth mindset for the mathematics will grow with it because the two things are, are linked in this case. Well, that's going to be it for today's episode. If you have any questions about the Engage Math document or board games or just anything at all, always feel free to leave me a message in the comment section below. But until next time, I'm Craig Thompson Wood, the board game teacher, saying thanks for coming to the classroom. Are you coming back to school with me? We could.